Hello again. Today we're going to talk about conductors, insulators, and semiconductors. There is a Google Slides posted in Google Classroom called Conductors and Insulators. And when you go into the assignment in Google Classroom, we'll make you make your own copy. I will be referring to that some in this video. That should entirely be reviewed. That is even considered to be at about a fifth grade level. Um, this should be all stuff you talked about in third, fourth, fifth grade except for semiconductors. That's new. That's me. Just like always, you know, there's always this little stuff you've always learned. And then Ms. Harris adds the little at the top. So um, I want to talk about semiconductors as the new thing. But first, let's go back and review what are conductors and what are insulators. So conductors are things that limit the flow of electrons. Conductors can apply to both heat and electricity. So something that allows a flow of heat, something that allows the flow of, ele of electrons, electricity, uh, are, is a conductor. So usually that is a metal. Metals. Metals are the things that are on the left-hand side of the periodic table. All of the things that are colored right now, whenever, when I highlight over the metals, that's the ones that show up. Now, the things that are alkali metals and alkaline earth metals, those, while they are metals, they are, they are highly reactive, so they aren't used quite as often for electricity. These transition metals, the ones here in the middle, are the ones that are most commonly used. Gold is a very good conductor for electricity, also silver and copper, and you can see they're all here in this same family. Then nickel is also sometimes used, zinc. Um, you can find some iron or steel cables, um, but all of these conduct electricity. Some of them we don't use very often just because of their expense. Osmium, iridium, tungsten uh, are, are very expensive. Platinum, um, they do conduct electricity, but they're so expensive. Then insulators are made from nonmetals. Insulators are made from covalent bonds. They are molecular compounds. Things like rubber and vinyl, cotton, paper, the products that are inside wood, um, air is composed of nonmetals. So this is where you find your insulators on the right-hand side of the periodic table. So our new fella on the block are the metalloids, these ones that are the green on the stair step that go between metals and nonmetals. They're not quite metals, but they're not quite me non-metals either. They're called metalloids, and these are the ones that create the semiconductors, especially silicon. Silicon is the metalloid that is making our conversation right now even possible. Okay, so we took a little trip to the periodic table. Now we're back, and we know that conductors are made of metals. We know that insulators are non-metals, and we know that semiconductors are metalloids. Semiconductors are things like diodes and the other components inside your laptop. So isn't this terrible? I know, right? But you've seen one of these before way inside you've got your motherboard and in the components of the motherboard are these things lots of these things the things that look like buildings in the city and those are all semiconductors every one of them doing a different job semiconductors are, are low resistance in one direction and high resistance in the other direction and it makes it so that those on offs those start stops those zeros and ones that need to be done to make a computer work can happen uh, an LED is one I know that you've heard of, a light emitting diode. It's a type of resistor used a lot in flashlights. And unfortunately, it's so crazy because I can see this as clear as day here, but I already know it doesn't work there. There's this clear square that you can see when this flashlight is being used in the middle and you can see the LED diode in the center. And it's called a light emitting diode. <clears throat> and what it does is receive the electricity and that resistance makes it glow. And you get that very bright light. It doesn't give off a whole lot of heat, which is why we like them so much. They are light emitting diodes, but not heat emitting diodes. 
Um, now, conductors and insulators. Why in the world can we even have these? Right? Well, that right there goes into whatever your device is, your phone, your computer, and that's metal. And it does have some semiconductors in it. And it tr that travels down a wire. Well, how can we manage to put this in our ears? Because of insulators, because we have plastic and rubber and vinyl and silicone all there together to make this safe so you can listen to your tunes without electrocuting yourself. For the assignment for today, we're looking at conductors and insulators. And like I said, this part is all review. There isn't anything about semiconductors in here, but there are some conversations we can have. So on the uh, second slide is the first activity you need to do. And you're just gonna read the box and decide, is it conductor or insulator? So the first box says materials that allow energy or electrons to move through it. And that would be a pause, do yours, conductor, that's right. Metals like silver, copper, or gold are, pause, that's right, conductors. Now, this one is not worded great. I need to, I need to fix it. It says it does not conduct electricity well or allows electricity to flow through it easily. And it should say does not conduct electricity well or does not allow electricity to flow through it easily. So I need to make that change right away, don't I? Non-metals like cloth, leather, plastics, and rubber are insulators. And insulators can also be called non-conductors. Although I have to admit, I've never heard that one. The next slide. In the third, fourth, fifth grade, you were supposed to get the chance to do this. I'm so sorry if you did not. But your teacher should have arranged some sort of exploratory lab where you had a light bulb and some wire or some sort of device that helped the, connect the battery to the wire or to the light bulb. And then some items, a feather, a rubber band, an eraser, a penny, a paper clip. And you were supposed to see which items did the light bulb light up and which items did the light bulb not light up. Hopefully you got a chance to do this. Like I said, if you did not, I am so sorry. But from what we know, if we put the object down and the bulb lights up, we know that it is made from a conductor. So you'll just erase the second half of the question. If the light bulb does not light up, we know that it is an insulator. All right, for the next slide, you just are going to drag and drop. Now, there's a couple of these that some discussion can be had, but pause the video, drag and drop, and then come back. All right, the key is a conductor. Normally, keys are made out of brass, and brass is a alloy of copper and bronze, I believe. Correct me on that if I'm wrong. A book is made of paper and wood and cardboard and air, so it's an insulator. Pennies are usually made of copper and zinc, so it's a conductor. Now, at the bottom here, we've got some debate going on. Let's do the easy one first. The cup is an insulator. It's made out of plastic. It's got air. It's, it's an insulator. This part of the scissors would be a conductor, but this part of the scissors would be an insulator. So I think you need both there. And then... People are really semiconductors. We are conductors. I would not be able to be talking to you right now if I wasn't able to conduct electricity because the very conduction of electricity is what's making my brain make myself speak. However, we do resist electricity some, and that's why we end up getting hurt when we get uh, struck by electricity. Um, I always heard the story of two men that were climbing a tower. It got hit by electricity. One survived, one did not. Why? Because one's heart was open and one's heart was closed. One was in the lub and one was in the dub. And the one whose heart was open survived because the electricity was able to go through him. The one whose heart was closed, it he resisted the electricity and had a heart attack. So, um, yeah, I, I, I would say that, that that one's debatable. Semiconductor, I guess. But this is supposed to be for fifth grade. So, all right, next slide. That is not plastic. It's silvery, shiny, grayish. So I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be a metal spoon. 
Okay, pause it, sort it, and come back. Paper clips a conductor. Straws an insulator. Spoon is a conductor. Aluminum can is a conductor, although not an awesome one. Aluminum doesn't do a great job because it's one of the poor metals. Wood is an insulator and a nail would be a conductor. All right, for the next uh, slides, there's three sides left. I want you to do these on your own and hit submit. What you're gonna do for slide number six is just look around your world and name 10 conductors and 10 insulators. Um, then you're gonna answer qu the question on seven. Would this gold ring be a good conductor? Why or why not? And would the circuit light up? And then the same question on the t-shirt. Would it be a good conductor? Why or why not? And then would the circuit light up? Why or why not? Um, please go ahead and do that and then come back to the video. I'll give these answers, but I am not going to give the brainstorm question answers because it's just a list. So the gold ring, yes, it would be a good conductor because it's made out of metal. If it was in a circuit, the light bulb would light up because it's a conductor. The t-shirt, no, it would not be a good conductor because it's made out of cotton and cotton is made from non-metals. If it was in a circuit, the light bulb would not light up because it's an insulator and electricity could not flow through it. All right, so I'm back to wrap up this lesson on conductors and insulators and semiconductors, mainly just to let you know that we're going to be doing this again on Thursday. And on Thursday, we're going to talk about series and parallel circuits. And if you have an old set of Christmas lights at home that somebody's willing to let you cut up, maybe like half the bulbs are out and they're willing to let you uh, chop it up, um, then you would be able to do what I'm going to be showing you on Thursday for Thursday's lessons for series and parallel circuits. I went the more expensive route, but you can go the cheaper route. All you need is the line of lights, pair of scissors. If you've got some electrical tape, it would be helpful. Electrical tape, almost everybody's got a roll someplace in the house. And then if you want to go ex more, uh, more expensive than the super cheapest, easiest, but still really cheap, you can get these. They're called alligator clips and they have them at Walmart and it's like, 10 of them for $2 or something like that. I did go the more expensive route. Also, where the electronics are, this was less than $10. Now, I've got all kinds of stuff I don't need, but I got a whole set of what I did need. A bunch of these little these little connectors here, and that way I can just slide everything in and out, and it makes life a whole lot easier. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing on Thursday is making series and parallel circuits. So you're going to need a battery. You're going to need um, the wire, the, the lights, the light bulb, and then you're going to need uh, electrical tape or, or something like that. Um, and then next week, we're going to talk about electromagnets. And I've already made one. Oh, <laughs> this thing is crazy, but you'll have to wait until next week to see what it does. Hope to see you on Thursday. Hope to see you next week. Take care. Make good deci decisions. Love you guys. Bye.